Welcome to the Chief of Cybersecurity Podcast, where we discuss relevant information concerning the cybersecurity workforce, business development, and best practices made possible by CMIS. Learn more at CMIS.net. And for a list of authorized publications, visit DwayneHart.com. And now, here's your host, Dwayne Hart. Welcome again. So we're back to another section of the Chief of Cybersecurity Podcast. Always driving awareness, always talking about relevant topics in the cybersecurity industry. Uh, one of the things I always like to uh, state is that throughout my career, uh, I've seen a lot of disconnections when it comes to cybersecurity. And that was one of the motivations of writing the cybersecurity mindset is that uh, I wanted to at least raise awareness on certain topics towards cybersecurity so that the industry could become wiser in their decision making. Uh, now, speaking of decision making, one of the areas that focuses a lot in cybersecurity is the decisions that are made toward risk. Right Now, risk is something that can cause a potential harm. So in the cybersecurity world, there's a certain mentality that exists, such as I have not been hacked. I can't find any problems. All of my reports are in the green. So my environment is safe. And this creates what I call a zero risk mentality. And today we're going to talk about having a zero risk mentality. Now, now, zero risk mentality for this podcast session is about the mindset of saying that we have no problems. We are never going to have problems. Right. And all of my reports are showing in the green. So I'm good. So I can cross my legs. I can put it on the desk and I can feel happy now. But you know what? In the crevices of some systems, they are problems. So in this podcast session, let's just focus on zero risk mentality. I want to bring up something that's very important here is that is that when we think about combat warfare, right? And we think about cybersecurity warfare and we look at how both of those operate. We we know that threats time vulnerabilities equal risk. So when you have a zero risk mentality, right? You're saying that there is no risk. Okay. Imagine, imagine a battle commander that's taking your troops um, on a mission and he always assumes there are no risk. Imagine the complication that could, have, could happen. So in cybersecurity itself and on the cyber warfare, if you're thinking that you don't have risk, right, now, now what happens is that, that you cause more risk, and they're called human-induced risk. And a lot of times human-induced risk happens because people don't have that defensive mindset to position themselves as a human firewall. Later on, we're going to deep dive into those topics and find out what the defensive mindset in the human firewall is all about. In the cybersecurity mindset, chapters 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 are going to expand on this podcast session here. All right, so so I go repeat that again, chapter 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Because, because this podcast session is driven toward that risk-based attitude. There is another term, uh, which is another technology that is uh, growing well, which is called zero, zero trust. Okay, so, so I'm going to break it down here. You know, what is the difference between zero trust and zero risk? OK, zero trust means that you don't you don't trust nobody on a system. OK, 
And zero risk is saying that I ain't got no problems. Okay. Zero trust attitude can defeat the zero risk mentality. So I just want to bring it up. And, and, and that's very important. So, so let's deep dive into this podcast session a little bit more and talk about zero risk. And, and, you know, let's just go over, go over some of the concepts you you know, we're going to talk about. We're going to roll into talking about a risk management culture. What is made of a risk management culture? We're going to deep dive into a risk based attitude and then progress into talking about some of the security risks that you have uh, when you have a zero risk mentality. And then last, I want to talk about implementing a cultural shift. Okay. How can you really take a culture and shift it outside of that zero risk mentality and drive a risk based attitude? All right. You know, um, one of the analogies I always like to do uh, use, especially about risk, is that imagine, imagine a car, right? And imagine that car having a bad part. Everyone that has a car knows that when you have a bad part, sometimes you can still drive that vehicle, right? But eventually that part is going to fail. But when? We don't know. So take that same concept and apply it to an IT and cybersecurity. When you have issues that are growing and, and just continue to evolve on the system, if you do not take care of those issues, eventually something catastrophic is going to happen. And if someone has a zero risk mentality, this is the outcome. All right. So in order to really um, focus more so on zero risk, uh, someone has to understand how compliance work because compliance saying, okay, then, um, you know, I reached my benchmark, but then you have to extend compliance because there are benchmark scores that you get, right? Let's say for instance, if you had an assessment and if you fail, let's say if you pass the assessment, right? And let's say the score was uh, 90%. Well, you're not supposed to go in your office and put your feet up on your desk and say, I pass. All right. That is a zero risk mentality. What should happen is a person should extend their risk based attitude and say, OK, I pass with a 90 percent, but I need to keep my feet on the paddle. One of the other uh, factors is that risk discovery and opportunity provide advanced insight. So. When you have a risk-based uh, attitude, you are always thinking, okay, although, although I found risk on the enterprise, I know that I have problems, but I'm going to take this moment to improve operations or cybersecurity for the enterprise. Because a lot of times organizations are scrapped to believe that when they find issues that it's bad. Yeah. Yeah, it can be bad, but also, too, it's an opportunity of success. So if someone has a zero risk mentality, then. Right. And if they find issues, then primarily what is going to happen, OK, is that they may get a little hostile. All right. And say, that, oh, man, we got issues up here now. OK, because. You know, well, we shouldn't have any issues, okay? Because I don't believe we have any issues. You know what? That's okay. But keep in mind that this is a place where you can gain insight into your environment because with a risk-based attitude, then you're always thinking about, hmm, if I find problems, it's going to give me a chance to fix it, and I'm going to make it a lot better the next time. One of the other uh, areas, too, here is that security cultures address risk based on unknowns and assumption versus in-depth analysis. So when you have a zero risk mentality, you're just looking at the surface. OK, everything is in the green. Oh, yes. The green means that I passed. Right. 
So we know that there are certain organizations or there are certain people that love to be in the green. And in order to get in the green, then they would do little clever things like move printers off of their reports so they can um, so they so they can call their metrics to go and uh, reach a certain level. OK, this is that zero risk mentality in place. All right. One of the outcomes, too, is that um, for zero risk is that it create more risk response versus proactive engagements. So that means that when you have that zero risk mentality in place and you saying that, hey, we do not have any risk on the enterprise, okay, you're going to spend more time trying to respond to issues. But if you dispel that and move it out of the way, you become proactive in saying that, hey, Although we haven't found any issues, I still think that we need to assess this enterprise. This is Zero Risk 101. Now, Zero Risk has a direct relationship to the risk management culture. So, so let's talk about the risk management culture. Now, what is the risk management culture? Okay. Uh, it is a place where you can identify and manage uh, risk across the enterprise because it's a holistic way of looking at the enterprise and looking out where your weak points are and try to look out where your gaps are and try to come up with some solutions to reduce risk on the enterprise. Uh, it also provide integrated management reporting. So let's go back to going in the green. These are reports that are established for management to review. But if an organization has a zero risk mentality there, uh, sometimes the green may not be true. Reduce vulnerability to adverse events. Yes, because we know that risk is equal threat time vulnerability. So in order to reduce your risk on the enterprise, so you have to reduce your threats and your vulnerabilities. Some of the other factors is that ability to align the risk appetite and strategy. Okay, what's your risk appetite? This is the amount of risk that you can deal with. And what's your strategy toward the risk? So with this zero risk mentality here, right? <laughs> Imagine the appetite, right? So, you know, the appetite is probably large now, right? Really large. But if you have a risk-based attitude, then the appetite gets really low because you don't want risk to be around. Some of the other factors, too, um, here is that help to seize opportunities. Yeah. When you have a risk management culture, you are looking at avenues to seize opportunities. This goes back to Chapter 14 of the Cybersecurity Mindset, Responsible Actions and Ownership. Someone has to take responsibility. Someone has to take ownership for cybersecurity. And if no one takes responsibility and ownership, then it's just like leaving a system out there by itself stranded. And see, that happens a lot with a different technology teams because you will hear familiar terms such as it's the responsibility of the networking team, whether it's the responsibility of the help desk team, uh, well, it's not my ticket. Well, it's not my job. Yeah, that's true. But I think that should be some type of involvement and push from others just to make sure that you get things done. Something else. Zero risk mentality defeats the risk management culture. See, now the purpose of a risk management culture is to manage risk and to reduce risk. So if you have a zero risk mentality, then you're not helping out at all, okay? Because that mentality is saying that we don't have any problems. Every IT personnel that have worked in cybersecurity know that in the crevices of every environment, there's always risk in place. Now, so let's just move on to do a deeper dive into that risk-based attitude. How do we honestly build a risk-based attitude? I've always brought up the concept called a human firewall. 
a human firewall is a defensive mindset that someone has where, where they become the protector of the enterprise. Now, I'm not here to say that someone has a weapon and they're standing outside a data center. No, no, it's not in, it's not so much in a physical form. It is more so a mentality, okay, which is a thinking process that states, okay, uh, I want to make sure that the system stays protected. All right. In order to make sure that the system stay protected, then I need to have that risk-based attitude. And part of that risk-based attitude uh, can be uh, something as the, the def defensive mindset is, is one, okay? Uh, one of the other factors that you have in place is like negative thinking, right? Because when you have negative thinking in place, right, you are not going to become a human firewall. You're going to be thinking, okay, cybersecurity is really not important. I don't care. Uh, well, you know, that's the, that's the job of the networking team. Culture identity is very important because what happens is that when cybersecurity environments build a culture that is operating and there's a buy-in for, for cybersecurity, people become human firewalls, right? Because they want cybersecurity to operate. Now, trying to build human firewall is a mental concept. It is a buy-in structure. It is, it is having a team of people that really wants to be on board and to embrace the cybersecurity culture because a lot of times CISOs are guarded as the gatekeepers, right? And told that you are the one that's uh, carrying the flag for cybersecurity. Yes, you know, in so many ways it's true, but a CIO, the CISO cannot survive by itself, him, him or herself, all right? So, so what happens is that that CISO depends on the culture, and part of that culture is to have a buy-in structure that's in place. And uh, part, part of that buy-in structure is that people can discourage risk, all right? Now, that is the premises of the human firewall theory, all right? You, you yourself want to discourage risk because you don't want risk to be in place. But when there's a zero-risk mentality there, uh, it kind of defeats the human firewall concept. So, so that's something that's very, very important, too, because what all of this leads into is complacency. When you think of complacency, you can think of it, think of it as a lapse in uh, involvement, uh, a lapse in understanding the environment, a lapse in being part of cybersecurity. You know, there's a lot of times when... Um, Organization use visual data to represent risk, and uh, sometimes individuals depend more on that visual data than trying to interpret the data. What that means is that that if you look at a dashboard, and if you see a score at ninety percent, now. When you do an in-depth analysis, you should go through it and say, okay, it's 90%, but let's see how did we achieve 90%. A zero-risk mentality is saying, oh, yeah, we at 90%. We are good. Okay, you're going to stop there, okay, because you're not even going to try to do no research at all. So I always bring up the concept, especially about visual data, because visual data is just our indicators, it tells us where we are, but still there needs to be an in-depth analysis on that visual data because sometimes that visual data can be fed the wrong information. Now, this is where data quality comes into place, all right? You should be doing data quality checks. You should be checking systems because a lot of times the application tools may not be getting the right feed and the right information. So when you have someone that operates on the concept of a human firewall, they are always searching and prowling 
to make sure that something is accurate. So, so with that said, think about the zero risk mentality and how it affects cybersecurity because there are some risks that goes along with the zero risk mentality. One is reputation. You can destroy a company's reputation with that zero risk mentality because if you have partnering companies and let's say you have an audit and you tell them, hey, we scored 90% on our audit and we're good to go. And you never did an in-depth analysis of that 90% and then later on your partner company find out that you had a problem. See, see, that's your word. See, now that's your reputation. Upscreen and downscreen compliance. Because upscreen compliance means that that uh, person B is responsible with, responsible with the relationship for person A. Downstream compliance means that person B has a responsibility with person C. So imagine person B having a zero risk attack like they don't care. Saying, I'm always right because you know what? The system is still going. So, like, we don't have problems. Imagine the type of relationship that you build. You also can increase vulnerabilities because when you have a zero risk type of mentality, then you are always going to increase vulnerabilities because you're not doing that in in depth analysis of your systems and your applications. Inaccurate tracking and metrics. Okay, when it comes to metrics and tracking information, when you have that zero risk mentality, as I said before about data quality, what are your metrics and your numbers that you're reporting, especially if the printer's been taken off the list? Is that really an accurate uh, indication of your of your security status? A hacker's appetite. Okay, you just fed a hacker a great meal. All right, <laughs> a hacker's appetite. So I always like to use that term because uh, a hacker's appetite is just feeding easy information to hackers so that it so that they can cause havoc. So that's what that means. It also defeats the growth mindset, right? Think about in chapter two of the cybersecurity mindset where what well, has a written, written description of the growth mindset because the growth mindset states, okay, we, we're going to improve this enterprise. We're going to make it a whole lot better. But you can't make the enterprise better if you have a zero risk mentality because you're saying that there are no problems and I stop here, Right? With the growth mindset, you're saying, okay, we actually made our benchmark, but we still need to uh, assess the environment and to keep our foot on the pedal. This is where the growth mindset comes to um, play. And over in Chapter 2 of the Cybersecurity Mindset, I have a long discussion about the growth mindset. All right. Um, <clears throat> you know, because I remember when I was at a conference years ago, and I was speaking to a gentleman, and so he stated to me, he said, hey, he said, if, if I have not had any risks, if my environment has not been hacked, he said, I should not have anything to worry about. Um, and I told him, I said, that you got a lot to worry about. And he almost dropped his coffee. Then he asked me why. I said, because uh, you always look for continual growth i said because you haven't been hacked or you haven't found a certain level of risk i said that doesn't necessarily mean you're safe i said that you always have to keep your eyes open and uh he goes wow he said i didn't know that i said yes i said cybersecurity is always ongoing i said in the crevices of the unknown there are probably problems i said but you have to um, have some type of architect or uh, process in place where you constantly, constantly stay proactive. I said the failure is to become reactive. All right. Now, reactive is when you got to play catch up. I said you want to reduce that. I said you want to be more so on the proactive side than, than on the reactive side. And after that, he said, wow. He said, that's a lot to learn. I said that, eh. 
I said, yeah. I said that we all are learning. So back over here to this discussion about zero risk, okay? One of the things that it does is it calls more labor. You're going to spend more time working. Think about if an organization was proactive and it, and you took care of issues early. So that means in the reactive state, then you don't have to spend so much labor out there working and trying to play catch up. I know a lot of people that listen to the podcast know that it's a havoc when you got to play catch up, when you have to catch up on something that could have been taken care of maybe three, maybe four weeks ago. And you wonder, did anybody even think think about taking care of the issue? Because now, now you are already tasked with high op tempo and so much work in cybersecurity, but then you have to play catch up because of that zero risk mentality. So you spend more labor and more time trying to remediate issues where is where if you were proactive then you didn't have all those problems. Okay. Here's the premises of cybersecurity. Increased protection and lower risk. I gotta repeat it again. Increased protection and lower risk. Okay. If you have the zero risk mentality, that defeats the concept. Because what you're gonna do, you're gonna lower your protection and you're gonna increase risk. All right? This is exactly what actually happens. Because the whole premise is, again, and I say it once more, is to increase protection and a lower risk. When you do that, you can mature cybersecurity programs. In my conceptual model that I built for the cybersecurity mindset, there is a um, nice diagram that takes all 20 chapters and it breaks it down and shows you how they're correlated together and why Increase the protection and lower risk increases um, the maturity of your cybersecurity programs. Am I always safe? Okay. Okay. Zero risk mentality. Am I always safe? <laughs> no, you're not. Okay. This is this is this is very important here because. Uh, with the zero risk mentality, someone thinks that they're always safe. Okay, always safe, and you know there are no problems. So, so zero risk mentality can be fixed. The first step is that we have to think about implementing a cultural shift. Um, chapter one of the cybersecurity mindset talk about a cultural shift. First is you always got to have a buy-in structure. Okay, people, people have to buy into your programs. You always have to brand your program. Like you brand these programs to fit the organization. You know, it's good to go by certain standards that you have in certain fashion, you know, because you have to bring these standards on board. But you also have to brand these programs. And branding these programs means that that you create a risk culture that fits your organization. Ownership has to be taken. Somebody has to take over. Somebody has to assume responsibility for taking over that risk management culture. And also, too, the organization speaks risk because you can tell it amongst your uh, meetings and your team. People have that defensive mindset in place. Digital modernization and business transformation is very important as well, too, because when you modernize your environment, uh, you're going to be looking at ways of of taking that culture and growing them, uh, not not so much on how to use the tools and the software programs, but also to to go have that mindset in place, right? Where where they can also look at business transformation and saying, how can we make this better? Now with the zero risk mentality in place, no one is trying to make it better. All right, they are happy exactly as they are. And, you know, their feet up on the desk and, hey, you know, we're the best environment in the world. But in the crevices of those environments, there are always problems. One of the other factors, too, is proactive security has to be in place. I always speak about proactive security because, see, we never want to be in a reactive state too much because I realize in certain certain environments that you have a reactive state 
And sometimes that happens because of emergencies, but but you want to be leaning more toward the proactive side, though. All right. Now, NIST has a framework called RMF that that you can research about, and you can look at all of those security controls that are in place, and it'll go help you understand why the zero risk mentality should not be in place because there's about 500 type of controls out there. You have to define your cultural norms. You know, how is this culture supposed to operate? Because you want to have a, a culture where people will embrace cybersecurity, where people want to be on board with cybersecurity. Trust your cyber senses defeats zero risk mentality. Your cyber senses is that another level of sense that you have outside uh, the touching, the hearing, the tasting, and so forth. Now we are all born with this next level of senses, which you call your cyber senses, right? And your cyber senses tells you that something is wrong, that you need to investigate it. And that will defeat the zero risk mentality because the zero risk mentality is saying that I don't have any problems, so... I'm not going to investigate. Keep in mind that that you're always at risk, all right, and you need to have a more defensive measures in place, and that starts with the human firewall, okay? Now, when you have the human firewall in place, this is when your organization can achieve success, and this is when your organization starts to grow. And as your organization starts to grow, and also as an individual, you're going to grow as well, too. Because even if you're sitting at home and if you're not part of an organization that manages cybersecurity, in some fashion, you are affected as well, too. So if you have a zero risk mentality by sitting at home now, change it. Do not place the concept to say, hey. Uh, I've been logging on my laptop for the past month and ain't nothing ever happened. You know, well, half of the time, if you let someone else use your laptop, you don't know whether they practice security like you do. See, that's something to keep in mind. With this cybersecurity industry, organizations are always trying to mature. And that's where the growth mindset comes to play. Because cybersecurity maturity is very important because if you think about the conceptual model that I spoke about, which is for the cybersecurity mindset, when you increase protection and lower risk, you can mature your cybersecurity programs. And when you mature your cybersecurity programs, this is going to give you the opportunity to be more proactive and less reactive. It's going to defeat the zero risk mentality. It's going to build those human firewalls. And and I said again, you are going to have a defensive mindset. So cybersecurity maturity is very important. So in episode four, we're going to be talking about how to build a successful cybersecurity model. I will see you in episode four. You've been listening to the Chief of Cybersecurity Podcast, where you have gained relevant knowledge to enhance your cybersecurity mindset. Be sure to visit DwayneHart.com to learn more about authored publications, show notes, and discover more information concerning cybersecurity.